Thanks, everybody. Uh, welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. In the beautiful new film, Lost Child, a PTSD-suffering veteran played by Levin Rambin comes across a feral child roaming the Ozark woods, and she attempts to take care of that child. Unfortunately, in the haze of her psychiatric and family issues, as well as local myth, she may not be up to the task. Let's take a look at the trailer for Lost Child. What's it been, 15 years? I need to find Billy. I ain't seen Billy in a long time. You come around here asking about me like there's some kind of family reunion plan after what you did? These are the Ozarks woods, child. These people around here, they don't play by the same route. You should take me about one minute to figure out who needs what. What do you suppose I need? What are you doing out here? Do you have a name? You brought that little boy out of the woods into your home. How is it you came to live out here in these woods? Bad idea to tell people too much about yourself. Causes trouble. Where'd you get that boy? Have you ever heard the word tattered alien? That's an old one. Well, boy was banished to the trees. He'll make you love him. Old time stealing your health. <laughs> Life years ahead. Why were you living in the woods? Can't tell you. You got to take that boy back to the forest and leave him where you found him. I need to know what you are. You think that I don't see that I'm sick? What are you? What are you doing? Do you believe in? Monsters. I want to stay with you forever. Everybody, please welcome from the film Lost Child, Levin Raman. Hey there. Thank you so much for being here. Congratulations on a beautiful film and a wonderful performance. Thank you. Um, Rama Mosley, the director of the film, has made a couple films before. I think nothing quite like this, right? Correct. Um, so what was it like when she approached you, when you met her, when you started talking with her about this movie? Well, I approached her with you approached much her. fervor, yes, because I read the script and thought um, that there really wasn't anything like that for young women um, at all. And I've been in this business for 14 years, so... Um, I was, I just knew that I had to do it and I wasn't the obvious choice. Um, you know, when you look at me, I don't think you immediately think, um, army veteran from the Ozark woods, but I was like, I will do anything and everything in order to honor what you've written and, um, to fulfill this life of Fern Treves. And, um, I will go places that I don't even want to, but I do want to because I like it. Well, let's um, talk about some of those places that you went to. When you say I will honor uh, what you've written, what did you think that that was going to entail going into it, and what did it end up entailing for you? Um, I, I just I knew it was very personal to her this film because it just was written from such a honest place, and I was like, this means a lot to her, and this means a lot to me, therefore, because she's trusting me with this extremely personal story. Um, so when I read it, I knew that Fern was someone who had no, uh, safety in life. She had no family. Her parents both have died. She doesn't, she was in foster care. She doesn't know where her brother is. She's kind of been lost in the system of, of, uh, society. And the only place she ever had was the army and that messed her up even more. And so she tries to get her security by, finding her brother, Billy, who you see in the trailer, is not exactly excited to see her. Um, so during that journey, she finds um, Cecil, the lost child, who kind of interrupts her her search for herself, and he's spooky. But um, So she kind of like loses her mind during the movie because she starts to believe everything that everyone is telling her, which I think we can all relate to. There's lots of Ozark myth that have sort of come into play when 
when dealing with this child. Um, what was it like portraying someone who had just come back from war? What kind of research did you feel like you had to do? And what was that like? I, I felt it was extremely important to um, do a lot of research and make it as truthful as possible. Obviously, you know, you can't go off and do that as an actor, but to go to war. But um, to me, it was about, it was the emotional truth of someone who has gone through something really traumatic and who was strong in the face of that. And I actually read a book called Love My Rifle More Than You about women in the military. And I actually connected with the author and learned a lot about that dynamic of men and women in the military, um, which is really tense and strange at times. So, um, yeah, just imaginatively brought that to life. Do you think she came home stronger from her time in the military, or do you think she came home um, even more traumatized than prior to leaving? Think, because she was traumatized when she left, too. Her family life had been a disaster at, at best, at it best, sounds yeah. like. Which a lot of people can also relate to. And I think she, her, this was her, going into the military was her attempt to make it on her own and, and stand on her own two feet. And I think superficially she's stronger, but internally she hasn't really digested or processed any of the trauma that she went through as a child and through the lost child she's sort of presented with that question of like what what's going on with me because she's so lost she's a lost child herself now you said that uh going into this film you you felt like you would be the last person anybody expected to play this role or at least that the director expected to play this role because uh, you said that you felt like you, you feel like you don't look the part of a military woman from the Ozark Woods. How did you end up? Did you try to make yourself look more like that part? And what did you do to do that? And I mean, believe it or not, I don't look like this every day. So <laughs> I actually do look more similar to this disheveled, scared mess here. Um, but I mean, that's my essence. I, I'm not this. This is not. This is not. This is glam and this cost some money to do. Um, but I, I think I'm scrappy. I think I'm a, a fighter. And I think um, someone's laughing at me still. Um, I don't think they were. <laughs> I'm laughing at myself. It's fine. Um, I, I'm, I'm inherently very tough and very strong. And unlike Fern, who's extremely emotionally closed off, I am very open and I'm very honest. But um, so my essence was, was this. This is, this is my inner... That's that's your that's your soul, your spirit. That's my she's my spirit animal. She's your spirit animal. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Um, and what was it like working with uh, Rama? Um, Rama and I are soulmates. Um, I, uh, I I mean I read the script like I said and it just jumped off the page at me and I I fought for this role really really hard and when I when I talked to her initially I was like look I'm gonna go nuts for this like I will go nuts like I will do I'm going to go nuts because I want to. Because I'm insane. Um, Are you insane? Sure. Because <laughs> you're just like in the general way that an actor is insane, you feel like? Yeah, probably okay. a little, yeah. Um, also, I'm a woman, so clearly I'm insane. Um, just kidding. Um, I always find the actor insanity is a sort of insanity that's bred from a desperation for authenticity. I think that that's a beautiful way to put it. Um, I, I, I was talking to someone about earlier this morning about, you know, the places that I went for this movie. Like, you see me screaming at this kid and he's freaking out, losing my mind. I was like, I enjoy that. Yeah. I enjoy exploring where I can go as a person, like, mentally and emotionally. And we can all go there um, in our quietest moments. I just don't mind put doing it in front of everyone, um, <laughs> deliberately. So I, I, I get off on it. That's what makes me an artist, I guess. Are you known to be dramatic in your regular life as well, or are you able to save it for the screen? Extremely dramatic. Extremely, yeah. Yeah. Why, yeah. Well, I, <laughs> Unless I find that, I find some... I just feel few, very deeply. Yeah, few... Like, this is the end of the world! There but it is. Certainly it's not. Um, no, but, it might be. We might be near the... That's okay. I <laughs> believe it. Um, no, I've been told I'm dramatic, but I just feel everything so deeply. And if it if it it's maybe, but I think everyone has the capacity. I just think how much do you protect yourself? I just don't. I'm just like a raw wound, um, which is great sometimes, not great the, other times. Yeah, yeah. Great for the work. Yeah. Bad for the life. Right. Yeah. Sometimes good sometimes, for the life, yeah, probably. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, you've been you were in the Hunger Games, mm -hmm. right? 
Uh, what was it like being on that set compared to being on a set like this? Um, similar environment. We we were in the, we were in the Ozark Woods for this in Missouri in West Plains. I don't know if anyone's ever been to West Plains, Missouri. Woo woo. Um, no, no one. Okay. Um, we shot that in North Carolina, Hunger Games, and again, very tough girl, uh, scrappy and competitive and um, relentless. And I mean, that was a huge budget movie. This one we made for not as much money, believe it or not. Um, but I, this was much more rewarding for me. I imagine a lot of movies don't shoot in West Plains. Not right? a lot, no. So what was it like working with uh, the local people there? You know, How did they respond to the shoot? Because you're shooting bars around there. You're mm -hmm. shooting in the woods. You're shooting in a lot of... Uh, I imagine if you, you didn't have the budget, so you're not making those abandoned houses. You're... They were already there. They were already there, exactly. Mm -hmm. And maybe some of them were even abandoned and you were renting them. So what was it like working with everybody in the in the West Plains shooting the movie? Well, um, actually, most of the actors were local people that we found selling fireworks on the side of the highway. True. The doctor, um, the little boy, Landon, um, who's incredible in this film. He's the male little Dakota Fanning. Um, He's from Arkansas, and we found him like shooting squirrels um, before this, and and then. How did you find him shoot? Like you he, he auditioned. The oh, he did but audition. Okay. He drove from Arkansas to audition from after hunting with his cousins, um, and then Jim Perrick and Taylor Smith were the only actors, the only real actors in the movie. Um, so what's that it, was incredible. What's it like for you as an actor going from working with a non-actor to an actor? Like if you're doing two scenes in a day and one of them is with a non-actor in the morning, the other one's with an actor in the afternoon, what, uh, what are the major differences and what are some of the um, things that, uh, that you like and dislike about either one? Oh, I mean, I, I learned so much from having real people in the movie, um, they were very authentic. They, I think they made the world so real because for us, the character of the Ozarks and the character of the town and the, the, the essence of the people and the essence of the woods and the houses, and it, it was a character for us. You know, we couldn't have made this movie in Los Angeles. Like, this was very important. So those people really added a, a texture and an essence that you can't get with, like, so-and-so from Burbank. Um, who's putting on an accent. So that was really um, invaluable, what they brought. Um, Does that force you to think about your responsibility more as well in terms of representing this area? Oh, yeah. I, I wanted to be extremely, like, authentic. You know, I don't... I didn't want to be glamorous or, you know, I stayed in a dorm and got in there. That, that's just my job. So I, I didn't... I don't have that... I need to be like pramp. Like I just no, that's not what the story is, and that's not what the place is. So we were like hanging out with the locals at the bars and playing like ukulele at the barbecues on the weekends and jumping in the river and just really got in there and it's a totally different way of life. I mean we're in New York City right now and it could not be more opposite. And but I just like absorbed it all and I think it came out through Fern and um but yeah, the difference between working with the non-actors and the actors was amazing. I mean, I, I, I brought Jim Perrick into the movie because I was like, I just need to know that I'm going to be okay because <laughs> I know you're a really good actor. So just at least one person I know I'm going to work really well with. And um, so I think it has a really good balance of actors and non-actors and you can feel this kind of amalgamation of that. Yeah, ab absolutely. I didn't think that's so interesting. I didn't think the doctor was a non-actor Oh, that's all. amazing. Yeah. There's, um, I mean, Yay. I guess there's, some, and maybe it's his authenticity, but what he's doing is actually probably hard. I, I would say it's really hard for a non-actor to pull Extremely. off. Extremely. Like most of the time, non-actors are cast to be just regular people, but he's actually forced to convey a sense of fear mm -hmm. and almost like a suspense in a horror movie, which is usually something reserved for professional actors. Yeah, no, we asked a lot of our non-actors a lot. <laughs> A lot, and Ram and I, like, helped a lot. And, I mean, I, I guess I took for granted, like, I've been memorizing lines and, and speaking comfortably in front of people and cameras since I was 14, but this guy's never seen a camera. So it was a huge uh, 
challenge for him. There's also something about memorizing lines that professional, I mean, it sounds so easy, but when you're not a professional actor, oftentimes people read the lines and like, oh, I got it. And then they're like, wait, I, I read it. I thought I had it. And you're mm-hmm. like, no, you have to memorize. Yeah. And it sounds so simple, but it's actually a part of the craft and the job that I think most people don't recognize takes more time than you think it does. And I think that was maybe the biggest challenge for the non-actors. Like the guy who plays Fig, who's amazing in this, such a character, local guy was bailing hay. Fig is the guy that wants to burn the house down? Yes. Yeah. Like local guy who was bailing hay. And he's He's great. Amazing. He's amazing. He's an amazing villain. And um, you had to be like, I'm going to run lines with you for a little while. And he's like, what? Yeah. He was like, what's that? Like, what's a line? And I was like, oh, my. Um, but we really got into it. Like, he was so game. That was, a lot of them were just so game, too. Because they were like, I'm just here to have a good time. Like, let's do it. You want to punch me and beat me up and throw me in the fire? Do it. And I was like, good, because I'm going to. Um, so, yeah. So that must have been fun. So fun. Doing something like this, I always wonder for, for actors, I mean, the job of an actor is you have different types of jobs and different types of performances. But when you go from something like this that you have so much more control over and you're working with a director that is a lot giving you that control and giving you that trust, how hard is it to go back to other kind, like normal jobs afterwards? So hard. <laughs> this is not a normal job. This is a passion project where you are given a certain amount of freedom, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, this was mostly female crew. We had a female producer, a female director and writer and me. And we were like, this is our baby. And I'm so, so proud and pleased that people are seeing it and loving it and it's coming out. Um, But yeah, this was like my heart and soul. So I was able to be extremely risky and vulnerable and crazy and try a million different things and collaborate with Rama and, um, you know, really go places that are not really usually asked of you, maybe in TV and sometimes, or or some movies, but I just had such an amazing story to sink my teeth into. It was really hard to go back to doing something that wasn't as rewarding, but maybe like good for my bank account, you know? So, I mean, that's a totally, that's annoying. Yeah. yeah, that's a totally regular thing. <laughs> How do you get yourself back in the mind frame of being, for lack of a better term, a working actor versus the sort of passionate actor? Both are passionate, but yeah, you know both saying. are very passionate. But I guess I, I was like, how can I make this next job feel like this? Right. Because that's my, that's my responsibility. So if I'm not getting as much out of this job that happens to, you know, be more exposed or pay more or whatever, like, then I'm not doing my job. So I can, I found a way to make everything I did. I was like, look, and I just set a standard for myself. Like, if it's not this, if I'm not enjoying it at this much and I'm not going as deep as this, I don't want to do it. Yeah. I don't care if I star. I don't care. What was the most difficult scene for you to film in the film, in the movie? I mean, is it a spoiler? Is it a spoiler? Can we be coy about it? Um, I mean, there, there's, I, I think, I guess, from, like, the middle of the movie on, like, my character just kind of loses her mind, because um, she, she has PTSD from a lot of different things, and she, um, the paranoia of the fact that this kid might be something that he, uh, might not be what he appears, um, things start happening, and I'm sick, and people are telling me it's, it's because of this kid, and I start to believe it, and so my mind just, I don't know what to believe, I don't know what's real anymore, and that was really, that was really wild, to like just let myself go nuts and and feel so mentally unstable that, you know, I'm scared for my life, living with a little, like, to make him um, extremely scary to me, like this little kid Landon, who's like 10, um, he's like on his Game Boy and like throwing like a ping pong at my face, like, well, that was that was hard, but I, I did it, you know? <laughs> was there, um, when you're shooting something like this, I'm not sure how much time you had with this film, are you shooting lots of options so that you guys can walk a fine line, or are you calibrating your performance as much as possible as you move forward? Like, how chronological was 
the shoot so that you could do your performance that way. It wasn't chronological at all. Um, no. It's hard. But I, there was, I mean, I'm very, like, meticulous. So I was like, I'm tracking the whole thing. Yeah. So I'm like, I have, like, a chart and a graph. And I'm like, what have we already done? What do we do then? What do we do, you know, after this? What comes up? What have we already shot? What did I do there? And also, like, I'm sick in the movie and I'm, like, lo- you know, losing my mind. So I had to, I had to uh, make sure that that was charted correctly. Yeah. Not, not, like, so strict, but... Um, but yeah, I had to constantly remind myself, okay, let's just slow down everybody. Like what did we what did we just where do we just come from? Right. You know, not like lunch, but like what what where are we in the story? Where you know, where are we what's right after this? Like this has to has to fit. Um and so you got you're going so fast on these low budget things cuz they're like somebody's about to pull the plug all the time. I don't know who. I don't know what plug, but they're always threatening to pull the plug. <laughs> I don't know who they are though. Um but Is that true? Was there someone threatening to pull the yes, plug? Yes, every day. They're like, they're going to pull the plug. I'm like, they're like, hurry up. we got to get this shot. They're going to pull the plug. I'm like, who? What plug? There's no lights. I don't wear them in the woods. The location's going to go. The sun's going to go down. Yeah. We like, don't have the money to go into OT. Wh- yeah. yeah. They, they move. Yeah. I mean, you know more than me. I'm like, what plug? Who are these people? Get them out of here. Um, so it was really fast. Really, really fast. Um, like somehow that makes it better. But I was like, everyone just slow down. Just slow down. Like, we need to make sure this is awesome. This is the best it's going to be. So I need to slow down. Y'all need to slow down. Like, we need to all be on, on, on the same page. Absolutely. Let's get some questions from audience. Who has a question? Right here. Hi. Hi. Um, so, my qu- so, you've, um, so this movie is obviously more um, suspense, thriller, realistic, and you've also done projects like The Hunger Games, which are more sci-fi fantasy. So I was wondering, um, as an actor, um, when you are deciding the kind of roles that you want, do you have a preference for a genre or a theme, or is it kind of like a case-by-case basis? That's a really cool question. Um, I guess if I like the character a lot, um, if they have something that they're really, really, really fighting for, they really, really need. Like, they have, like, a thing they must have or they'll die. Um, No matter what the genre is, um, I find that really compelling. Um, Especially, like, for young women, you know? Um, I want to tell stories of women that are really going after something, right or wrong. Um, Strength. Yeah. Uh, Next question. I think this is uh, our our last one. I think that's all we have time for. Hi. Uh, we're going to take a question from an online viewer. Okay. Uh, Janet wants to know what your what kind of what movies and shows influenced you as a as an actor. Oh, that's amazing. Um, well, when I was younger, the movie Thirteen with uh, Evan Rachel Wood, I saw that, and I I was thirteen, and I was like, how does she do that? Like, I feel so much watching this film and she's my age and like, how how do I affect people that much? Because that left a mark on me big time. And um, so that inspired me to kind of follow in that footsteps of like, what would Evan Rachel Wood do? Um, and as I got older, I started watching, you know, older movies and watching, you know, actors like, I love Marilyn Monroe, she's my favorite. Um, and like Betty Page and just kind of mixing them all together, like contemporary and, and, and old school because, um, yeah. Um, congratulations on the film. Thank and you. And a great performance. How can people see Lost Child? Lost Child is coming out on September 14th right. in Los Angeles, New York, and some other towns. Um, <laughs> that's... <laughs> um, will be available at Lost Child Instagram. You can see that, those towns. And it will be on um, VOD uh, on the 14th. Fantastic. Congratulations, Fantastic. everybody. Give Thank a round of applause. So Let's hear it. Thank you.